Wednesday, 26 January, 2217 hours. <laughs> Wednesday, 26 January, 2017, 1832 hours. We have ways of making you talk. <laughs> keep talking. They tell me I need to keep talking. But they never say about what. Perhaps it doesn't matter. More likely, they just don't know. No. More likely, they don't know, don't care, and can't understand why anyone would ask. You don't explain to a machine why it needs maintenance. Wednesday, 26 January, 2017, 12 hours. How many life-changing moments have you had? Put it another way, how many periods can you divide your life into? The points of division being the moments when something fundamentally changed you. But the moments of division are rarely what we think they should be. Sometimes you know your life just changed direction, and sometimes the moment slips by unnoticed, and you have to work back later to find it. First date, first kiss, first fuck. Last date, last words, last sight of their angry retreating back. The day you got married, the day you met the one, or two, or five, you should have married instead. The day you realized the opportunity to go back and make it right is long gone, and you never even noticed it passing. No. I don't think it works like that at all. Your life changes when you're ready to have it changed. And the thing that changes it, changes you, changes the way you feel about everything, is just the excuse. It was there at the right time, and it nudged you over the edge. But the edge was already there. And you were ready to jump. A piece of music, a line of poetry, a news report that accidentally acknowledges a fact that puts everything around it into a different light. A juke that cuts through all the confusions and equivocations you've built your life around. A confession of a long-held secret shame from a now half-senile parent who's been carrying it around so long. It's turned into part of themselves they can't imagine cutting out. But what makes you ready to change? Is it that everything you've done and thought and experienced up to that moment has been unknowingly guiding you to that point? Or is it that last night you couldn't sleep because there was a fly buzzing around your room so you couldn't sleep and it threw out your diurnal rhythms? So at this morning's breakfast, you felt a little bit greedy, so your blood sugar is raised to 14 instead of 12. If my blood sugar had been a bit lower at that hour of that day, maybe I wouldn't have joined. I would have remained vaguely sympathetic to a cause I didn't understand, and vaguely resentful to a world that didn't understand me. But I don't think joining this or that group needs to be the moment. It could be something someone said at the third branch meeting, an aside that no one else paid attention to, but that I heard because my blood sugar was a bit off that hour. Thursday, 27 January, 2217, 02.39 hours. You're supposed to first fall in love around 16, 
and it's supposed to break your heart, but you get over it, and that's supposed to inoculate you against that kind of chaotic infatuation. So you can move on and have more mature relationships. Mature. That's what people who miss their youth call themselves when they want to pretend they don't miss their youth. Seasoned. Well weathered. Experienced. I was not quite thirty the first time I fell. Well, you don't fall exactly. You jump. And then wonder why you're falling so far. But you kind of like it. And my heart did get broken, as we both knew it would. And you never quite get over it. Perhaps nor should you. And the inoculation seems to need a booster shot when you're about fifty. Thursday, 27 January, 2017, 10, 19 hours. Jeff. Singer-songwriter. The old-fashioned kind, with a real wooden acoustic guitar. Long, dirty blonde hair, never quite clean-shaven. Too many unfinished songs on his pad, and not enough calories in his diet. We met at an online concert, as people did in those days. Barefoot, red bandana, altitude worker shirt. Actual, honest-to-goodness, blue jeans. I thought he looked ridiculous. I fell. I jumped. I let myself fall. Right there and then. He played a set. A twenty-minute set, drifting into thirty. Songs about guys and girls he'd supposedly loved and lost. Or met and never known. Not my kind of music at all. I paid a few credits for his latest collection, just as an excuse to talk to him for a few minutes. That nervous smile with that broken tooth. I got hold of his mail tag, email, he called it. Very old-fashioned, just like his music. And set about trying to become his long-distance fan-slash-friend. Christ, I was pathetic. And possibly, just maybe possibly, just a tiny little bit creepy. Thursday, 27 January, 2017, 16.03 hours. It turned out he was going through a difficult time with his main partner. He wanted someone to talk to. I wanted him to talk to me. Well, I wanted him to murmur to me in the dark, but other kinds of talking were good too. I think he liked the attention. Almost every night, mail tagging, voice chats, vid calls. Sometimes he sang songs he was working on. Yeah. He sang to me. Sang for me. What is there more intimate for a musician than to share their new music? New, unfinished music that was sometimes about slowly, awkwardly falling for someone on the other side of the world. Because I already had, and he was. Not sex stuff. We hardly even mentioned it. I was having fun here and there with other guys, and he let slip that so was he, but no online flesh time for us. I was twenty-nine, he was twenty-four, and we felt like... like we were sixteen, and it was our first time, and we both knew it would end in broken hearts, and we kind of liked it. He wasn't actually twenty-four. Confessed that he was afraid if I found he was actually older than me, 
I'd stop talking to him. I told him, never. Six months went by before we were able to meet in real life. No, six months before he stopped worrying, it would ruin things. No, six months before both of us worked up the courage to risk ruining things. What was her name? Oh yeah, the partner, a woman. The second time Jeff and me met in person, he introduced me to his offline circle. I was a fellow musician and longtime fan from another country, which was true as far as it went. All the best lies are half-truths. If any of them ever told me her name, I've forgotten it. At the time, I thought she was, well, nice. A nice person. Not especially bright. Loyal, practical, and she really did love him. Took care of him far better than I ever could. Later, I worked it all out. She knew. He hadn't told her, but she knew, and he couldn't see that she knew, and she was smart enough to not tell him. He was lucky to have her. I liked her, and I wanted to take him away from her. So, I guess, it was her heart I wanted to break. Thursday, 27 January, 22, 7 day, 23, 18 hours. Friday, 28th January, 22, 17, 0, 1, 15 hours. That night. That one night. I got us a cheap hotel pod. He had tabs of flash, so we took one each and... We sat on the edge of the bed with his head on my shoulder, traveling, barely speaking. It had been a long day. A lot of walking around and seeing the city. So we took a dust shower together. He was surprisingly shy. Said he was never comfortable enough to give himself. Not fully. We stood and lay. The hot nano water falling and spiraling around us. I just held him. Close. It could have been just ten minutes, or half an hour, but with the flash in our brains, at the peak of the travel, it seems like weeks, touching, stroking, holding, with the hands, with the lips, whispering. I wouldn't let go, because I wanted it to last forever. No because I was afraid, if I stopped, he wouldn't want to start again. No, because I was afraid, he was bored, and just tolerating me, and if I let him go once, he'd use it as an excuse to not come back. I was being selfish. I was being a damn fool. Friday, 28th January, 2017. 0355 hours. Three months later, Jeff said he couldn't go on with me. He hated having to lie. He loved us both. He truly did. But she was his life, and I was... I was... What the hell was I? He was absolutely right, of course. It was obvious and logical. They were happy together, with money enough between them to be comfortable. I was earning just the credits to support myself and no one else. He was right. 
I cried for a week and begged him to, I don't know, get rid of her, keep lying to her, meet up with me every few months for a weekend in a hotel room where I'd kiss every centimeter of him because that's all I could offer. Friday, 28th January, 2270, 13, hours. Oh, yeah, she did tell me her name. Friday, 28th January, 2270, 23.03 hours. Ten years later, Jeff sent me a mail tag. They were still together, and he was just wondering how I was. I stared at the words for at least an hour trying to think of how I could ever respond. I'd joined a cause that was going to change the world, and I was making music of my own, and I'd read so many books full of mind-blowing ideas. And I'd give it all up just to be with him again, because whole months could go by when I never thought about him, but... but... I was absolutely not over him and I didn't think I ever would be. I never sent a reply. Saturday, 29 January, 2270, 01-28 hours. Yes, the story of the monkey's hand. Three long-time podmates are given one altruistic wish each, each granted in a way which reverses its intended benefits. The first wishes them all out of debt, and the others receive the credits as insurance when she dies in a workplace accident. The second wishes the first alive again, and she returns, mentally destroyed from the accident. The third wishes her dead again, and they are left with the debt paid, having lost their friend. No, having lost her twice. We never see the returned podmate. There's no shambling, slack-jawed, reanimated corpse. Just a steady, slow knocking on the door. No terror, but horror. Nothing concrete. Just suggestion. No one is afraid of the dark. The fear is of the shadow in the dark. The almost unknown, the barely glimpsed, or the barely imagined. If we see through a glass darkly, the darker the glass, the dimmer the sight. But how dark can the glass get? Just how dim is the dimmest of shadows? Saturday, 29 January 2270, 07.55 hours. If a god is unknowable, there can be no prayer, no love, no trembling, no response at all. But if your god is just barely knowable, the mere most minimum, abjection, abasement, reduction to almost nothing, annihilation would be a mercy, but there is just enough left to feel the loss. Profoundest hell, receive thy new possessor. Saturday, 29 January, 2270, 30 January 2270, 09.44 hours. But why does the company pay the credits to the podmates? Blood money? Hush money. And they accept the cash and the implicit contract. One so implicit, everyone understands it without anyone acknowledging it. A contract that can only function if no one does acknowledge it. 
It is a revolutionary act to state the obvious. Thus, the greatest revolutions come from stating the most obvious. Thus, the greatest possible revolution comes about by discovering and clearly stating what everyone has always known, but no one has ever said. Sunday, 13 January 1925 hours. Janna. Not her real name. There was no need to use fake names, but some of us felt better for using them. You sign a form with your genetic print. You come to meetings where the police infiltrators can see you. You might even give fiery speeches about smashing the state in public spaces where the cameras can record you. You pay your subs from your personal credit account. You buy the books and have them sent to your personal tab. But you use a false name because it makes you feel a little more secret, private, safe. Janna. Pronounce the N double. From the Arabic word for heaven. I barely knew her. Twenty, student of something I couldn't spell, dreamed of bringing down the whole empire with a single grand romantic act and replacing it with, basically, the empire with all the admin, but none of the bureaucracy. All the convenience, none of the conquest. If the problem is bad leaders, and elections don't get you good leaders, just kill the bad ones and wait for good people to replace them. And if the replacements are bad, kill them too, until you get people in power who are determined enough to take it, but nice enough to not abuse it. I think that's what she was thinking. It seemed to change fairly often. She knew where I lived because I let her sleep there once, when she got kicked out of wherever she'd been sleeping before. So, after several months of not coming to meetings, she turns up on the same night the news was full of someone trying to blow up Tower 3. With a small homemade exothermic device of trivial power, which, reports said an hour later, had also destroyed Tower 1 completely, leaving a nuclear fingerprint showing a probable northern connection. At least twelve groups had claimed responsibility, three of which no one had heard of before, and one was called the Secret Global Conspiracy of Hindi Pride, Southeast England Division. Yeah, she had tried to go dark, but hadn't even turned off her tab. She was drunk, she was crying, she was desperate. A comrade of a comrade. And she had actually done it. Freed humanity and brought down the Empire with four friends and some cases of, of trinitrotoluene. Honest to goodness, old-fashioned TNT, like in those kids' cartoons. A couple of bagfuls which, according to later reports, had damaged a few windows in three of the towers. Over the next week, the party was rolled up. All the parties were, including some that hadn't existed for decades. I watched it happen, broadcast live in my temp cell. Just before they were sentenced, our centralized committee produced conclusive proof that Janna and her friends were neo-state operatives implanted to discredit the People's Democracy Movement. Monday, 31 January, 2270, 0742 hours. No one's ever worked out what jail time is for. Foucault called jail a convenient place for inconvenient people. So I suppose it's just a way to contain trouble, and the ultimate form of containment is, of course, execution. 
In the old American system, it was to create a reserve army of disposable unskilled labor, which is odd because there was never a shortage of unskilled labor. Later it became a reserve army of disposable semi-skilled soldiers, which had a similar problem. Plus, now they had bigger guns, and now had been trained to use them. Yeah, that went well. Liberals with a small L said it was a way to rehabilitate the misguided, and conservatives with a big C said it was a way to punish those born untreatably defective into not being born untreatably defective anymore. Or it's there to give you the opportunity to reflect on how you mustn't try to change the system because the system is perfect and unchangeable, self-evidently so, which is why it spends so much effort proving it is. For me, it was a way to take daily communal showers in coarse nano-water and be very, very bored. Monday, 31 January, 22, 70, 0, 9, 20 hours. Jeff with me under the hot shower. Microparticles cascading down and wrapping around. My hand reaching up and stroking through his long hair. My lips craning up to kiss his, then down to a nipple. His fingers on my temple, my jaw, my neck. I kneel, we slowly move to the ground, we lie side by side. Nano, surrounding, covering, flowing. Around and around. One moment. One moment spent in fear it would end. Love is never pure. The moment is never pure.